be this way Oh cool. You really put your hopes and dreams when you call this place your home I don't even really wanna be your enemy, oh no You tell me otherwise Welcome back to the Singing Simply Show. My name is Ivan, and on this show, we aim to make learning to sing as simple as possible. And so, if you're a first time checking out this podcast, make sure to check us out more frequently. Or if you're returning to this podcast, welcome back. And for today, right, the reason why we have this episode today, and you might have seen from the title, is chances are if you're listening to this, you love singing, you love learning to sing, and you probably like making music as well. And you know, if you're interested in making song covers, if you're interested in creating your own originals, this is an episode that you want to check out right to the end. Because today I have got the amazing Matteo. Uh, Matteo is a music producer based in London, and he's got two number one charting songs in Malta. So you know, he's really, really awesome at producing pop songs. And I actually listened to uh, Matteo your track from Junas. I think I don't know if I'm butchering his name, Junas, Junas. That track was so good. It was so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Jonas, you're very close. Very good. Very close. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, Ivan. Pleasure. 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 So, you know, actually even, even first of all, you know, uh, Matteo, before we jump into some of the good stuff, you know, talking about recording, talking about bit, some of, about arrangement, and then even jumping to a little bit of a demonstration with me as, as your potential client, I would love to learn a bit more about you, you know, for, for the audience. Tell us a bit about yourself. How did you get started with this journey? Um, and, and where are you now, man? Sure. So my job is basically helping artists and songwriters take their, their, you know, voice note ideas, things they record, you know, on their way to work or in the car. Or, um, yeah, you, some people say that they record them right after they come out of the shower as well, because that's where they get the most ideas. Um, uh, yeah, my job is to help them turn those voice notes into finished, you know, pop songs that they can use to attract, you know, more opportunities to them and to, uh, you know, grow their career. Um, yeah, I started this journey as someone who wanted to be an artist myself. And I, I just went into... Um, I went to a, to a to university for this to study for a master's degree um, in songwriting and production that was. And as I was going along, I realized that I'm getting more and more attracted to the production part of things, to the, you know, to the job of being that person that enables the artist to turn his vision or th their vision into, you know, into a finished product. And the more I got drawn to that and the use of technology in music, the more I realized that that's where my real passion lies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, here I am. I've been living in London for a few years now, doing sessions with like, amazing artists. I'm being like, you know, yeah, feeling like the luckiest person in the world most days. So yeah, I'm really glad. Yeah, I'm, re I'm really happy with that. <laughs> such a awesome story because i'm sure a lot of us can relate to this you know let's let's dive into the good stuff you know let's dive straight sure. into stuff. i, I want to kind of even start here maybe some of someone who's listening to this podcast is like hey i would love to record some music i'd love to record some music i'd love to get started with maybe making a song cover or even a bit of an original when it comes to making sure you get some good sound into your computer right what are some of the common equipments or common things that a, a person would need to start off with from your experience so first of all i just want to say that if you're a singer and you're looking to get into recording i think it's a really wise decision because it will enable you to learn and understand your voice a lot quicker because you're getting real-time feedback and being able to, to hear yourself really helps i'm sure that's that's something you can probably attest that you know yeah. as as a vocal coach uh so yeah great choice and it will make your journey a lot more fun as well because you can actually create yes. uh, you know that's why we're all we're all doing this to create things so yeah well done for taking that choice so basic equipment we are living in a world nowadays where you don't need much and that is you know that is incredible. That's going to give you so many more options. Most likely, you already have the main tool that you need, which is a good computer. Uh, and yeah, I'm not talking about some, you know a spaceship or anything. I'm talking about like the computer you use for your daily tasks. That most likely will do the job. 
And so let's start with that. Let's go with that. And after that, you need a piece of software called a DAW. You might have heard of this before. That a DAW stands for a Digital Audio Workstation. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Basically, it's a software that allows you to bring in audio tracks and you know record and record and create music. So that is the those are the main tools that you need: a computer with a DAW. And some examples of DAWs are you know if you're on a Mac, I would really recommend GarageBand. It's free and it is really easy to use. That would be my top recommendation. If you're on a Windows computer, it might get a bit more complicated, but there are options out there. Uh, I've, I found this, for example, this website that you can even use on a Mac if you want to. It's called BandLab, and it's basically a digital audio workstation on your browser, and it works really well. So I would recommend going with that, in fact, if you're on a Windows computer and just starting out, you'll be absolutely fine. So yeah, those, there are options there. And I think at that point, you can already probably start using your like laptop microphone to experiment and that, yeah, maybe just, um, you know, plug in your headphones to your laptop and just try experimenting with that. That is already a good starting point. And I'll be honest, that's what I started making my own productions with like years and years ago. Mm. It's obviously like not ideal. You're not going to expect like, you know, recording studio quality recordings there yet, but with a few more additions as you go along you'll be able to. So then the next step after that is to get what's called an audio interface. Mm. So I've got one right here, right in front of me. I cannot move the camera to show you right now, uh, <laughs> but it is basically a, a device that you connect via USB or USB-C to your computer that enables you to plug in speakers, microphones, and any other devices to your computer. It's basically creating a link between, between your microphones and your audio equipment to, to your computer. And these are, these can be like pretty cheap. You can find like really cheap, uh, cheap options. So for example, a focus, right? Scarlet, which is very com commonly used. That's like, I'm, I'm just looking it up right now in Australian dollars. That would be 165 Australian dollar stops. Yeah. And that gives you a really good device. And then after that, you are going to need a microphone. Mm. And there's again, infinite options out there for microphones. So I, I won't go into it. Like there's so many to choose from. I personally started with a microphone called a row. Rode NT1A. It's actually from an Australian company and it's fantastic. And I did like professional recordings with that. And it's again, really cheap and yeah, to improve the quality of your, of your recording. I have one here, lying around. You need to have a pop filter. Like you want Sorry, to I'm really disorganized. Yeah, like right. exactly. <laughs> that's exactly a pop. That's it. That's it. A pop filter just avoids, you know, just filters out all the P's and like uh, awkward sounds that you get from like, from when you're singing, um, a lot of what we call plosives. Yes. Um, yeah. And that, that alone will like, again, a drastic jump in quality. The only thing left then is a pair of headphones and you probably have already, you already have some, some of those lying around at home. And yeah. And those are really crucial because believe it or not listening to yourself and having something really good to listen, like really clear to listen to yourself is probably the most important thing. But I can't overstress how essential it is that you're able to hear yourself properly when you're recording. So at this point with these, with these, you know, few components that I mentioned, you've already got, you know, some, you've, you've got a fantastic setup set up. So yeah, once again, to recap, laptop, the AW interface, microphone, headphones, pop filter and yeah, done. Am I forgetting anything or I think that's it, is it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I was about to say, Mateo, like, you know, I think Mateo is such a fantastic teacher because he summarizes, breaks things down <laughs> so good. And I, I think one of the things that I, I took out from even just hearing you speak about that, Mateo, is, you know, just get started, right? When you know, when you first started doing it, like laptop microphone, right? 
and then then you build up your gear one by one and i think the mistake that we often fall into is we wait till we've got everything and i i, I was like a big you know victim to it you know i have to wait till i get my focus right which i've got i've got a focus right i have to wait till i get my proper mic to do things but my very first song was recorded on a usb microphone obviously if i had a better microphone it would sound even cleaner but you know get started release things produce things and um just wanted to echo what you've said mateo so um okay so you know say if our listener has gotten all these equipment they've got the daw you know they've got a pretty decent computer they've got all the equipment that you've mentioned and then now in their room about to hit record <laughs> so um any any tips right because you know um even from past experience sometimes when you record something in your room you'll notice that it, it doesn't sound like what it sounds like on the radio sometimes it sounds like really like like you're, like you're speaking to a box or there's all these random stuff happening and any tips on you know basic techniques when it comes to recording or getting a good take right so the very first thing i would recommend is spending some time figuring out which room you've got available it sounds the best mm-hmm. this is a, this is again a simple thing you can do to have a big jump in quality uh, there are some rooms that are really echoey, for example, uh, as soon as you, you know, if you clap in that room, you can hear the clap, clap reverberate like five times. That's not a good room to record in. It's going to, it's going to fa- factor in, into your recording, into your vocal recording. So you want to pick a room that is pretty much, you know, not reverberant mm. at all. It doesn't need to be dead. You know, it doesn't need to be like completely, you know, like silent. But at the same time, you want something that doesn't feel like, you know, a hole or something like that. So that's step one. Another thing, make sure that you close your windows, close yeah. any doors. It sounds quite trivial, really. It sounds something obvious, but a lot of people forget this. And sometimes I receive recordings from, you know, I've got, I've got really good artists who record at home and they're really good at it, but like, oh man. I had this amazing vocal take, but I forgot to close the window and you can hear the birds in the distance in one bit. Do you think we'll be able to get rid of it? <laughs> Most times, not really. You won't be able to get, to get rid of that. So yeah, just close the windows, make sure that, you know, any TVs around the house, any, you know, radios going on you know, are switched off. I know this can be harder for some people because, you know, they're living with people, but yeah, try to do your best for that. And yeah and that's a great start you should be all right in the room itself there are spaces within the room where the microphone will sound better so the first time the first time you're setting up spend some time around the room trying to figure out what which is the sweet spot and this again is really really more related to is it really echoey in this bit is it like really dark sounding in this bit of the room and once again simple things that you will only do once because once you find your setup you're sorted but will create big jump in quality mm. after that then it's more about learning how to use the microphone as a performer and how you sort of engage with the microphone and yeah that takes some learning yep. i'm gonna be honest so as you said just get started don't wait to learn before you start doing it you know you're, you're gonna learn by by actually taking the steps and actually starting to record. And yeah, just a few tips when it comes to engaging with the microphone. You don't need to be too close, but don't go too far either. So usually my, I always say like, try to imagine like the distance of like your, sort of if your hat spread out your hand, it would be something around that. Yeah, it would be something around that. And you know, with certain microphones, you may feel like, oh, for example, with the microphone I'm using right now, that was even that would be a bit distant. So I usually go a bit closer with this one. Mm. And yeah, because it always depends on the microphone and the setup you've got. That's right. But that's a good starting point. I would say start with that and start experimenting and being like, oh, it sounds really nice here. It doesn't sound so nice here. I can hear I hear a lot of ambience. Here is a bit too close. Mm. This is a sweet spot. So it's all about that relationship that you create with your with your microphone yeah i think i think that rounds it up yeah <laughs> that's like, it almost sounds like you know it's it's almost this relationship with your microphone and even your recording environment because you know choosing the right room experimenting the position within the room a lot of it seems as if you know 
there's there's a bit of experimentation you got to do and i think this is like the same thing with singing right you know a lot of people will think singing is there's just one way to sing there's just one way to do things and the reality is there's a lot of nuances you can play with and it depends on what side of music you're singing you know like you know who you are as an artist so i i really resonate with that really resonate with that of course okay great you know we've, we've followed this journey people are you know they've got the equipment they're now experimented they can get a really really good take they can do all this cool stuff any anything from more of you know they've recorded their first take you know they've got some some, some vocals into their daw how do we start to make it sound a bit better and like i know you've you're, you're a master at like you know layering and arrangement i saw some of your tiktoks and i'm like this guy is so good and any any tips there on like you know once you've got some vocals how do you how do you clean it up make it sound or sparkle a bit more right so the process usually goes in a, i've got I've, for myself i've got a very structured process of doing this with me usually i try and get a couple of good takes yeah so that's something quite important that you don't just settle for you know the first time you did it <laughs> mainly because you don't want to be thinking in the same mind and this is I, i'll explain this when you're performing put on a performer's hat and don't think too much as a producer don't make choices right there because of, you know tomorrow you might feel differently about the recording you did yesterday what i always do is try and get a couple of different takes of what you're doing so if you're singing a verse Record it once, record it twice, record it three times, figure out what you'd like to achieve from it and just do a few variations of that. Get, get you know, five takes to choose from. And that is going to be very crucial in getting a better, a better recording. You know, in professional setups, this is, again, a standard. There's no such thing as going in, recording it once and leaving the studio. There are situations where, you know, we would record sometimes hundreds of takes of the same bit because we're still trying to figure out what we're like to, would like to achieve we want it to be like whispery we want it to be to be a bit more you know a bit more energetic yeah. so that is quite you know it's quite an important part that a lot of beginners sort of skip they think they know the song so they just go and sing it but when you're recording it it's very different it's a very different environment to record to performing it live so yeah get a couple of takes and after that what you'd want to do is go through the takes i wouldn't do it on the same day do it maybe do it the next day or maybe do it when you're when you're a bit more fresh mm. especially since you're if you're working on your own and if, if you're working with a producer it's fine if they're doing it whilst you're yeah. whilst you're singing because that's you know you've got an extra set of ears but if you're doing it for yourself give yourself some space from it come back to it and pick the takes that you like and you can go into as much detail as you want here you can be like oh i like this word from here and i like this word from this other take and sometimes it really works out nicely and yeah what you want to do i well, we can probably show this in garage band later on yeah uh you want to create sort of fades between each section so that it doesn't click when you're uh, you know when you're going from one take to the other it doesn't sound like it's a robot jumping from one <laughs> recording to the other so that, you know, that way you've already like made a big improvement in the, the performance that you've, you've given. That is like the main step. Now, again, in professional setups, usually this goes through a process of tuning afterwards and a lot of like fine edits. You've all heard of auto-tune, this magic uh, plugin that is, <laughs> of course, as controversial as it is um, famous and important. I am from the camp that thinks that, that it's a good thing because I am more interested in, in a good performance through emotion and through delivery than tuning. And I know this is going to sound like weird on a singing podcast, but I, I, my belief is that your delivery and emotion is much more important than how in tune you sound. This is not to say that you should sound off key at all. Like you should be pretty much there. So I never accept a take that is, yeah. that sounds off completely. I'm like, yeah, let's do that again until we get that right. Uh, but yeah, we go through a process of tuning to, to get that to sound as tight as possible and as polished as possible for, for the recording. And then after that, we go through what's called the mixing phase. And that's where a lot of like, you know, you've probably heard of like EQ and compression and adding reverb. And 
that is something that you can do a lot of on your own as well. Like GarageBand, for example, has presets that you can just click on yep. and they already do a really good job of, of, of this part of the process of mixing. So that is something that you can learn a bit about mm. if you're doing your own recordings and again, get a lot of really good results. So yeah, I, I would say that that would be the process of how I deal with vocals. I mean, that's usually that would be like for the main vocal after in the recording session itself, I usually get a lot of layers as well, as you mentioned, and you know, you can, you can do as little or as, you know, as much as you want to hear. And I would say expert, like it's a good idea to experiment with this. A few common things that people do to get layers would be you know, doubling the part. Yeah. So simply singing it again in the same exact way in a, trying to be as tight as possible, like with timing. Yeah. yeah. I think that has a layer that could really like fatten, fatten the sound of the vocal sometimes, or create like an interesting feeling to it. Uh, this is a very common, this is a very common technique. So this has been done since the sixties, like it's very common and we could, you know, another common thing is to sing an octave lower yeah. or an octave higher. So, you know, if you're singing a C on the main vocal, like you want to sing the C below that and layer that under it. Like Ed, Sheer Ed Sheeran does that a lot, for example. Yeah. He likes, he'd like layer all the, all the octaves that he could possibly hit. And that way his voice sounds like 200 times bigger than it actually sounds in real life. You know, it's all in the studio. And yeah. most people won't even realize it's quite, you know, it's quite something that we're quite accustomed to now hearing like the a singer singing in like different octaves yeah. uh, at the same time. Yeah. And then after that, you can get creative, you know, like there's harmonies, you know, like we could talk, we could have like another three episodes about like harmonies and vocal arrangement if you want to. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can get creative with like layering whispers in there like Billie Eilish does this, this a lot she'll, she'll sing her main vocal and then sing the same thing again in a whisper really again really tight really perfectly in time and yeah that gives you another different texture yeah. so yeah there's a lot to be creative with I would just encourage you to like be ridiculous if you need to be but get in there and try it out because yeah you can get a lot of really good results yeah I, I relate to that because you know um you know even before we, we jumped onto this this interview, Mateo, I was, I was showing you my song, right? And a lot of it was exactly what you've said, recording, experimenting. And I think if there's one thing for our listeners to take away, it is just, just get in there, try all these different sounds because once you give yourself that space, as Mateo is mentioning, once you give yourself that space, you can always go back and delete it <laughs> or you can not use it, right? Exactly. But it's better than not having that take at all. So go crazy, make those sounds where even if you feel like it's, oh, maybe it, it won't fit, that kind of thing, but try it anyway, try it. And, you know, I, I've, done, I've done so many quirky things, you know, the whispering, I've tried that a whole ton. Th these are all ways to help tweak your sound. So once again, Mateo, thank you so much for sharing that. You're very welcome. Um, so let's, let's actually do this, right? You know, for those of you who are, you know, have stayed to the end, we've saved some good stuff here because, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, how we do things, what, what do you, what you need to know. And we talked about how to record, you know, how do we start, you know, getting the sound into the computer and even, you know, ways to make it sound nicer with the layering. And a lot of it is just play around, experiment it. But, um, and Mateo has, you know, uh, so kindly promised and said, okay, to let's do a bit of a demonstration for anyone who has checked out until this point. This is a little gift, a little bit of bonus for you to check out. Um, and so I'm going to leave this to you, Mateo, guide me through it. How would you do this kind of demonstration? Okay. So. We are going to be doing this on GarageBand, which is again, a free software, as we mentioned earlier. And Ivan here has got his microphone set up on his focus, right? So I don't know what microphone is that? Is that, is that an audio technica, I think? Am I seeing that right? Audio technica 2035. Nice. That's a good, that's a good microphone. Really good microphone for home. Uh, he's got his pop filter set up as well. Perfect. He's all ready to go. You're wearing headphones, you're wearing headphones for your computer, aren't you? Perfect. We want to do that because if you're recording through your speakers, you're going to get what's called spill, which is basically 
the sound coming out of your DAW and into your microphone. And you don't want that. You want to monitor through headphones so that we avoid that completely. We don't want to record what's coming out of your speakers into your microphone. Again, seems obvious, but I've received recordings with sp spill in there. So um, uh, yeah, so Ivan has, is all set up and ready to go. He's got, you know, he's in his optimal space in his in his optimal room, the best he can get at home. And that's more than great. Let's load up GarageBand, Let's please. Get... All right, we okay. get. Thank you. It's yeah, and here we go. So, okay, this might seem like a bit of a, a shock to most people. They're like, oh, "What is this? How do I, how do I deal with this?" But yeah, it is a very, you know, a very simple thing as soon as you get used to a few things. So. On our left, we've got what are called audio tracks, and Ivan has already set up four of them. An audio track is where you'd want to record a single element of your track. So if I'm recording a band, for example, one audio track would have the guitar, one audio track would have, would have the bass. And obviously in your home studio, you want your audio track to have the vocals. All we need to do is just double check before we start that we are, we've got the right inputs and outputs set up. All right, so let's get these settings yeah. set up. I'm gonna jump into preferences. Right, so before you start, you want to double check that you've got the right settings in there and you've got the right inputs and outputs. You're basically telling the software where you want it to get the sound from. So, you know, if you've got your microphone plugged into your Scarlett or your whatever interface you've got, that would be the input. And then the output would be wherever you, the sound is coming out from. So in Ivan's case, he's got his headphones plugged into his laptop. So he set the output output to laptop. If you've got your headphones plugged into your interface as well, you can set the output to the interface. It's yeah, very intuitive as soon as you understand that. So yeah, we're ready to go now. Um, so we can close that window if we want to. And um, yeah, can you just double check that you've got an input there? Can you just speak into the into into the track? Testing, testing. Yeah, so it looks like we've got we've got an input. That is great. So on on the read on the track itself, so on the track, there is a button, which is the third button next to the headphone one, Ivan. And if you click on that, it basically enables you to hear yourself while you're speaking or singing. So can we just, just check that? Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, this is extra, extra feedback. Exactly. So now you can hear yourself, which is fantastic. You want that when you're singing. So great. We are ready to go in that aspect. So now we need to, we need to, our backing track. Ivan's got one prepared for us. Okay, so we now have the beat loaded in. So all you need to do is just drag and drop for something like this. Like find the file on your you know, system and just drag it in. And what we want to do now is do a bit of a sound check yes. sort of thing. So we want to figure out what kind of balance we want whilst we're recording. So this is not the balance that we're going to have at the end when we, when we, you know, when we publish this. Yep. This is the balance we want whilst we're recording. We can always change that, change this. Ivan, would you mind clicking on the on audio two again? So that's the other track, and that is the track that we're going to use to record the vocal on. Okay, so we go. We're just going to do a test take just to figure out if the balance is right at this point. So yeah, let's give that a shot. Okay, so there's a few things we want to be checking here. So first of all, how how was your experience? Like, could you do, was there too much backing track? Was there too much of the vocal? How did you feel about that? Yeah, I, I felt the backing track was a bit louder, potentially. A bit loud. Okay, that's cool. That's good. So all we need to do is just go on the top track, which has the backing track, and that yeah, that fader there basically controls the vol controls the volume of the backing track. So yeah, just try turning that down. Yeah, we can turn that down quite significantly, I think. Quite significantly? Okay. 
yeah. And at this point, you just want to experiment with that. So both the volume of your microphone and the volume of the backing track to find the balance that that is optimal to um, how you want to, you know, record. Yeah. And yeah, so that's one thing we want to be looking out for. The second thing is that we want to make sure that the microphone isn't clipping. And this is something we should probably have spoken about earlier, but yeah, it's a very basic thing. So on your interface, you can set the volume, the input volume of the microphone. You'll be able to see on your interface if whilst you're singing, it's clipping because you'll probably get like a red marker or something. You don't want it to be any anywhere close to that. So if, even if it's like happening one or a few times, you don't want that to happen. So turn you can turn the volume of the microphone from your interface down a bit for that not to happen. The other side of things, if the volume is too low, is not great as well. So you want it to be in a, in a sort of medium place where um yeah where it's at the right level usually like for people who are a bit more technological usually we aim for between minus 12 to minus 6 db you can probably see this in garage band as well you can see this reading happening but yeah otherwise this looks great i think on the microphone you should probably you could probably at least from from what i can see here i'm not sure what's happening on your interface ivan you could probably turn the volume down a bit on your interface i would say just just a tiny bit Kind of easy yeah yeah and yeah and then you want to keep repeating this like test take until you're completely happy with the balance because yeah as soon as you've got the balance right then you don't need to worry about technology anymore and you can just focus on singing so you want to get that out of the way we should probably do like another test take just for you to be sure that you're happy with this and then move on after that let's do another one Cool. So we've got our take there. Uh, we've got a few takes. In fact, you can see that GarageBand is telling you that you've got three takes that you recorded, which is great. Um, so yeah, you could probably like later on go through and like figure out which ones you like best. And yeah, and that, that is great. We, we're in a really good place. So now we might want to play around with some layers, I'd say. So do you want to test out a double track? So basically just sing the same thing over this. And to do that, we want to go on a new track. So we don't want to be on audio two because that was recorded over the main vocal. We want to go on audio three in this instance. So that's a track that Ivan has already set up. And yeah, all you need to do is just click on it and basically record the same thing again. Let's see what it sounds like. All right, let's do it. I don't even really wanna be, really wanna be this way. And you really put your hopes and dreams when you call this place your home I don't even really want to be your enemy, oh no You tell me otherwise Fantastic, that sounds really interesting, doesn't it? I think it really fits the song, the yeah. double track, yeah Cool. All right. So now we can probably play around with some octaves. I would say like, what would be comfortable for you as a vocalist? Would you go like up or would you go down like as an octave? I can try. I'll probably go the octave up then. You could probably do the octave up. Great. Okay. Let's try that out. So let's do an octave up. Let's see what that sounds like. I don't even really want to be, really want to be this way. And you really put your hopes and dreams when you call this place your home I don't even really want to be your enemy, oh no You tell me otherwise oh, That is sounding beautiful. You can already feel like a, such a difference from just the main vocal to having these these yeah. layers. That sounds great. Really good take, Ivan. Well done. Uh, I'm wondering, would we be able to double that high octave as well? Just do another layer of that. Love it. Please. And so even just, just for reference, anyone who wants to duplicate real easy or get a new track, I normally just command D and then you get a new track easy. All right. Yeah. So, wow. Great. Let's give it another shot. Let's do another, another high octave. 
And again, this is a separate track. So as Ivan did, we started a new track just so that we don't record over over the same thing. Right. Cool. Let's give that a shot. Right. Get my vocal cords ready. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even really want to be, really want to be this way Then you really put your hopes and dreams when you call this place your home I don't even really want to be your enemy, oh no You tell me otherwise I Cool, that sounds great. It sounds awesome. So something you can do here that's really simple that will make you know your stack sound interesting is to pan tracks. So you've recorded two of the high octave, right? So they're they're practically doing a similar, a very similar thing. They're doing exactly the same thing, but there's still two different performances. So they're gonna be slightly very slightly different. So you could try using that pan pot, it's like right to the right of your volume fader and you want to f to pan one like completely to the right okay. so like go all the way and the one below it completely to the left okay. so let's listen to a bit of that and what's happening is now is like it's sending one of them to the right ear on your headphones or on your speakers and the other one to the left ear and that's going to make it feel like you're suddenly surrounded by voices which is a, quite an interesting effect to have it's very common commonly used do you want to, shall we just play a bit of it for an example? Yeah, let's do it. I don't even really want to be, really want to be this way. Then you really put your hopes and dreams when you call this place your home. I don't even really want to be your enemy, oh no. You tell me otherwise. I don't cool. Even excellent excellent so now you know you could keep layering as much as you want to like you could do a lower octave you can do like you know um, harmonies whispers so yeah that's just that's just, just an example of what you can do with this uh so we yeah, have be creative and i wouldn't say there's like any there's any rules to this there's common practices like for example you want the main vocal you don't want to pan the main vocal for example that should be in the center otherwise you can you're free to experiment and figure out what sounds best to you at this point i would say you'd want to start thinking of you know what to do with this after you've done you've done the layers so i'm just gonna do like a quick like quick balance and like bring in one of the presets from garage band and let's get it to a better bit of a better place but yeah this could be like this could be a process that takes days sometimes some people like are are obsessed with this bit of the process so this is just, you know, touching the surface for now, yeah? So my opinion would be that the high octaves probably sound a bit too loud now that they're panned left and right. So let's turn them down quite a bit, I would say. You can turn them down like minus, minus 7, minus 8 dB. Let's try somewhere right there. 7 minus 8. Yeah, because since there, there's two layers of that, they're going to, like, boost the signal quite a lot. So, and yeah, you don't, you probably don't want the, double track to be as loud as the main either so you probably want to turn up the main just a bit because i was losing it in the mix mm -hmm. just a tad um yeah i think that should be all right um this is just guessing right now so you'd want you know in this part of the process you know you want to listen as you're doing these changes so trust your ears not your eyes in this bit like listen and just do, do changes as you go along there's no, again, no rules, just whatever sounds best to you is probably the best thing to go with. Let's give that another whirl. Let's see. I don't even really want to be, really want to be this way. Ooh. And you really put your hopes and dreams when you call this place your home. I don't even really want to be your enemy, oh no. You tell me otherwise. Great, so that's a lot more like it's a lot more balanced and a lot more um you know better to listen to. You know, you could go on like I think for example as in this situation the backing track is a bit low now, so we could bring that up a bit. So yeah, it takes it, it's all about like trial and there and, and getting to the right place. Um yeah, it takes time, but you'll be fine. So I'm just gonna bring in like a preset from garage band to get a bit more of a better vocal sound so we want to click on the main vocal let's just do it on the main vocal for now 
and on our top left there's an icon that brings that up and that will show you a list of um free set effects that you can use and it, it, they're, they're categorized by instrument so obviously in the situation you want to click on voice which brings up all of our voice presets and you've got quite a few to choose from there um yeah let's try i don't know let's try natural vocal let's see what that sounds like and that immediately brings up your effects you don't even need to think about any of these things just see what that sounds like and if you like it keep it let's give that a shot let's see what that sounds like I don't even really want to be, really want to be this way Oh And you really put your hopes and dreams when you call this place your home I don't even really want to be your enemy, oh no You tell me otherwise Nice Yeah, so that made it sound quite quite a bit better already i'd say um yeah on the at the bottom of your window you've got like your controls so there you could probably go into more detail if you if you're interested especially with reverb so that's the magical one that most singers like the one on the bottom left you've got a knob for for reverb that you can turn up um yeah you've got control over all of that so yeah this is just like literally like scraping the surface of what of what you can do with this so we have experiment with it, but I hope that this was informative enough for you to be able to take the first steps. Absolutely. And, you know, once again, I um, want, to, want to thank you so much, Matteo. And, you know, I think the goal of this episode, if you're listening, is to share some of the things you can start trying, because as you might have seen through this demonstration, just going from what we had at the beginning, that solo take, to what we've got now, this is all done in, what, less than 10 minutes. And, you know, if you spend time getting the best takes, you know, making sure you're on pitch because I was off pitch on some of those notes, making sure you're, you know, experimenting with all the different controls, right? You can actually get something really, really cool. And, you know, these are things that are just very simple techniques, recording it twice, pressing this button, pressing that button, and just playing around with some experimentation. So uh, once again, Matei, I want to say thank you so much for sharing what you've got, like sharing your knowledge. You are an absolute godsend. Before we wrap up, right, Matteo, hey, Tell the audience, tell the people who've just, you know, fallen in love with you, where can they find you? Right. So if you want to get in touch and please do, if you have any questions about what we've just um, spoken about, like I'm re ready to answer any questions you've got, you can find me on Instagram. So my handle is um, at Matteo Makes Music. That's M-A-T-T-E-O and then Makes Music. That's pretty easy to spell. And my website if you want to listen to any of my of the work that i've done or find out a bit more about me that's the best place to go it's www.matteomakesmusic again m-a-t-t-e-o makesmusic.com so yeah uh yeah please do get in touch if you've got anything to anything that you'd like to discuss fantastic and you know for anyone listening you know matteo is an absolute legend at music producing and so don't feel like you have to do all these things on your own usually what happens in industry anyway is you create like a little first product you get get some details worked out and then you can send it off to someone who knows their stuff someone who's willing to or able to take it to the next level so if you're looking to create professional covers professional music things that you really want to showcase your own voice your own talent get in touch with Matteo. I will be dropping your contact details into the description. So make sure to check it out and say hi, say hi to Matteo. And, you know, say hi to me as well. You know, if you've enjoyed this kind of content, I'd love to get connected with you all as well. So apart from that, Matteo, once again, thank you so much. You're an absolute godsend. You're amazing, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to get to know you. Uh, great to hear about what you do as well. So yeah, well done, Ivan. Thank you for having me. Pleasure.